and nets. Uh, and then there's some real specialized tools for when you're in areas with lots of tube worms and, and whatnot that will grab big aggregations of tube worms or mussels or uh, clams. One thing I'd really like is a subsea uh, drill to like collect uh, rock cores, but we don't have one of those and they're pretty few and far between in the, in the research community. starting to see a little bit denser uh, aggregation of, of animals as we get higher on the seamount. Can we get a zoom on whatever's on that sponge stock? Yeah, sure thing. Get us a better view. Go ahead, Dave. Push on in. That's great. Kind of look like barnacles. Yeah, very cool. Go oh, wide, please.
Hello. Hello. I'll be switching out. Thanks, guys. I'd like to thank all of our viewers for joining us and asking great questions, making good comments. We are about to go through a shift change. So I'm signing off and I will see you tomorrow.
think. So, Kate, it sounds like the it sounds like the um... yeah, you can see it right now. Um, from Rainy's handover, it sounds like long moves might be our strategy and just keep her moving at zero point two knots. Um, um, Rainy was having everyone trying to sample at the end of his moves um, for rocks and whatnot, and then if we see a sample, just keep going and then come back. Um, but yeah, so we can check. Okay. Okay. Yep. Cool. Yeah. Five minutes, probably a little less now, like four-ish, but five, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Steve, do you have any um, insight for next moves or just heading up to way two? Yeah, we're going to continue on to way two uh, and then be in the lookout for a rock collection sometime in the next, uh, oh, maybe, what are we at now, 30, you know, maybe the next, yeah, starting now, we'll start looking for a rock that we can easily pick up. I don't really see anything in the frame here, um, but between now and, you know, 3,400 meters, hopefully taking a peek at okay. something. Okay, if we're going to do it, if it's going to be close, uh, I don't think we need a ship move in yet. I'd like to get uh, stretched out in front of Argus, and yeah. then uh, if we see a rock in that time, sure, we'll go for it. So you want, this is going to be a Niskin rock sample, right? Niskin rock duo. Roger. You ready to do this, Josh? Yeah, totally. Okay. Hello to all our listeners. You can probably tell we just did a watch change. Um, so this is our new 12 to 4 watch and our first night all working together. So good day, I guess. New day to the team. Um, my name is Kelly Farron. I will be the science communication seat. Um, so we're just starting to get moving and we'll introduce you to the new watch in just a little bit. If you're just tuning in, we've been diving for just over six hours now exploring an unnamed seamount, Seamount C, um, doing about an eight kilometer transect. So we are three, three, zero. just getting caught yeah. up. Yep. Um, I'll do 100 meters. Uh, science, are you seeing anything you want to sample? You're just looking for anything loose, right? Yeah. Or a specific? Or limited. We were really limited with rock choices here. So we're looking for something loose and preferably bigger than 10 centimeters. That's kind of our size threshold okay. minimum. Yeah, loose, preferably. Otherwise, you know. Um, something tappable. Yeah, something capable that we can just, yeah. We don't want us to spend too much time breaking things off, but right. even though that would be the most ideal sampling situation, but so I'm not seeing a ship speed on my Grafana. Are you? Um, no, I'm not. Over on my high pack, we're going less than zero point one. Okay. Um, so my guess is we just might not be moving enough to register something. Okay. That makes sense. What is was the ship moving at? It's a little. It's having some trouble holding station now. Yeah. It seems to be moving off to the uh, to the east. Mm. It's coming back now a little bit. What's that, Josh? It seems to be coming back a little bit now, maybe. Okay. So I see some loose rocks here down in the lower right portion of the screen. Yeah. You see those, Steve? In, see yeah, those that's now? where I'm looking. 
Yeah. They might even be the right size. Yep. Yeah, the, the one that's longish shaped. Oh, okay. It might be a candidate. Very deceptive terrain, though. Yeah, totally. I think it's pretty steep. Okay. Uh, I'll give those a poke then. Thank you. So what we have here, though, in the surrounding area looks to be like blown up, blown apart pillows, um, some pretty angular stuff with some pretty heavy looking iron manganese coating. So Josh, can you give me a five? Um, it's often super deceptive. A, yes, a macro five on that. That's the arm. Then it's this button. I think five and then whatever it takes to get the arm there or the there you go So these seem quite wee. Yeah. Are they too small? Uh, they might be too small, yeah. The, we're looking for like at least 10 centimeters, but um, yeah, okay. I mean, it, it's loose. So can we yeah. maybe zoom in on it and get a yeah, better sure. look at it in situ? And when we zoom, definitely click away for screen grabs. So they're like about 10 centimeters, maybe a little less. Yeah, yeah, that's the, what the last watch was saying is that that's about the minimum. Um, okay. Yes. Yeah, uh, si since we're st uh, yeah, since we're stationary, let's go and do it anyway. Okay. Can you go just a little wider? Can you? Yep. Let's see here. So that way we at least have some insurance. So maybe this one? Yeah, the biggest one you can see in this pile, okay. or movable one. I think that's going to be it. Yeah, I think so. Just a wee guy, though. Probably about 10 centimeters length, you think? Yeah, maybe. That's what I'm suspecting. Can you go a little wider video? Thanks. Okay, zoom in. So. Oh wow, I have bubble. It's great. Thanks. In the in the description. Yeah. Now they're going to hold it up and do a little show. You can image it. Looks like 
looks like a nice piece of rock, probably mostly crust. All right, we've got good captures on that. We can stow it. Okay, where do you want it to go? Uh, we can go into the starboard bio box in one of the smaller inboard compartments, A through C. Roger that. Dealer's choice. Okay, um, video, you can go wide if you're not already. Oh, it looks Full like wide. you are. Awesome. And uh, can I get a uh, camera swapped around and bubble on the shoulder? Data, what sample number was that? This is number six. Copy, thank you. Is there a salvo these days? Is there a salvo over here? Yes. Do you know where it is? So it's going to be the purple buttons. Purple. And there's a... Oh, over there. Yeah, and then there's Got a it. SAMP one. So there you go. Now they've pulled up the starboard bio box right in the corner there. And you'll see it open, and you'll see how the sample's deposited. For a little one. So D is the only occupied one right now? Correct. There we go. It's a good sample. If only we had Dan for our like big rock juju. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we hope uh, as we move up a little bit, we'll hope we'll uh, get some of that Dan spirit. Yeah. Break apart some rocks. Because we're definitely not going to break a thousand pounds for both My cruises. Regular at this rate. cameras. Ready to go back. Y yep. Yeah, we're definitely not. It's a little disappointing. For our longtime listeners, we collected 898 pounds of rocks last cruise. Oh my goodness! Wow, <laughs> I did not hear that fact. That's mm -hmm. amazing. What was the heaviest rock that you got? Oh, I. I think they were in the range of 52 pounds. Ooh, yeah. that's a heavy rock. Two of them, pretty solid. We had one we had to put back because it was just way too much. So, Steve, do you want to do the Niskin while we're sitting on the bottom, or do you want to come up? Um, we can do it right here sitting. OK. Yeah, as long as there's not too much sediment disturbed. Uh, OK. I don't have the sense that there is. We're sort of on a hill, so yeah. uh, on the side of the vehicle, we probably didn't disturb the sediment yep. too much. No, that looks good. We can go for Niskin. Uh, the first one, Niskan 6, has been pulled, but the rest are open. Okay.
Steve, can you give me some iris there? Without porch light, I've got to kind of thank you. That's awesome. So now they're going to pull. The Does that look like the right one? Two? Yeah, uh, your choice. One through five. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so so just, we'll take a look. There's See in the second panel over, there's the Rittniskin rack. We'll just take a look and see which one pops. Let's do this one. This is three. Yep. Got it? Got it. So that was Niskin three. Okay, so is your feeling you want to go for the next move or keep looking for better rocks? Uh, you know, let's 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 make some tracks. Okay, sounds yeah. great. Um, okay, I'll just get out in front and then we can call on the move. Awesome. Um, yeah, Argus moved about twenty-five meters northeast from its original position. Okay, great. Um, and yeah, the ship certainly has been wandering. Yeah, I don't think they'll be able to hold position. They've been giving it full thrust, so okay. Um, just with the conditions going on. Okay. So the time on the sampling events for the first one was this one, and then the second was that one. Okay, I'll get out in front. Yeah, they, it seems like they're probably better off moving. Just that staying, they've got, yeah. staying in motion, yeah. Three zero zero, correct? Uh, three three zero. Oh, okay. Okay, we can get that move going. Bridge, this is Nav. Can we please move bearing three, three, zero, one, zero, zero meters at 0 0.2 knots? That was bearing three, three, zero for one, zero, zero meters, 0 0.2 knots. Roger. Steve, we just passed over all of our big rocks. I know. <laughs> I know. It's, it's always going to be like that. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, so, I mean, fortunately, you know, our next rock collection schedule isn't, uh, isn't too far ahead of us. Just a couple more hundred meters. So we'll keep a lookout and uh, see if anything looks really obvious. But otherwise, we'll just kind of move along doing snap zooms. Uh, where okay. we have time. Sounds good. I mean, right. point two is quite is quite slow, so mm -hmm. we should have time yeah. to do stuff. Uh, All right, that move is in. Great. Well, we started off Night Watch strong. Way to go, Gabby. <laughs> the first hey, sample. Yeah. <laughs> nice job, everyone. Steve, now that we're moving as our watch lead, if you want to maybe introduce yourself and we can start with the back row of who he, who's here tonight. Sure. I've got Hel two Steves. That's going to be confusing. Yeah, yeah. Science, science Steve. We've had this problem before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, we, we got through it. Yeah, Science Steve. Um, so my name is Steve Oskovich. I'm the watch lead for 12 to 4. Um, my role is basically to make sure we keep the dive moving according to plan. Uh, make sure our sampling objectives get 
um, accomplished uh, for the duration of this watch. Uh, otherwise, I'm a researcher myself, uh, interested in deep water corals and their diversity and biogeography. But uh, for the moment, uh, we're not seeing a ton of life here, but it's definitely uh, something we'll keep an eye out for. I suspect we'll see more stuff as we move shallower. Uh, but immediately to my right, I have Hi everyone, uh, my name is Ashley Mickens. Um, I'm a master's student at the University of Victoria in British Columbia, Canada. And uh, yeah, really excited to be here. I'm a data logger and uh, yeah, just excited. This is my first cruise on the, the Nautilus, so very excited. Yeah. Woo Happy to have you here, Ashley. Do you want to do some intros in the front row if we're ready or maybe Steve, video Steve? Sure, this is Video Steve in the video chair. Happy to be here. 12 to 4 watch. And thanks for joining me, everyone. For time incorrectly. <laughs> We've gotten some questions of who's operating the Predator. So ROVs, if you have, when you have a second, we'd love to get an intro. Oh yeah, even if you start going uh, oh, I can do half a, a knot right brief, now, we've been uh, here for an overview of the dive right plan and we'll wait yeah. for them to get situated. That sounds great. All the flowers. Uh, so, like we mentioned at the top of the hour, we we're diving at Seamount C uh, in the vicinity of Chautauqua Seamount nearby. Um, but this is an unnamed seamount that we are diving up from pretty much close to the maximum depth that our ROVs can descend down to all the way up to the top of the seamount around 1800 meters or so. Uh, we have a couple of uh, objectives uh, both to characterize the geological and biological landscape as well as sampling some of the choicest rocks at this site. Uh, we're looking for all types of rocks from angular rocks to crusty rocks uh, as well as accompanying water samples. Right now we have a very beautiful stalked crinoid coming into view and there's also a tiny little dandelion siphonophore on the left-hand side. <laughs> yeah. So, we, yeah, yeah. These guys are like suspended by like little spider threads. Mm -hmm. yeah, we can uh, can you give me a zoom video? Oh, they're so cool. Yeah, so this is a type of cnidarian, a uh, typical jellyfish, a uh, type of jellyfish, you could say. Um, uh, siphonophores typically are colonial organisms. They float through the water, typically uh, capturing prey. Okay, go wide. But these ones are attached to the seafloor by small anchors. Still doing the same function, though. And the scientific name for that one is Thermopalia, uh, since they were initially found associated with hydrothermal vents. Ooh, very cool. Yeah, I've seen them at thermal vents. I didn't realize we'd see them just sort of out here in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Uh, What's the prognosis? Well, yeah. It's not Austria. doing well. These were moving due east, about 10 meters. Does he need a different heading, or? He's got the wind to his is that is that the wind that blue arrow? Um, yeah, current is the sorry, current is the blue arrow okay. arrow, and wind is the um, yeah, that's not orange that's arrow, and he's going full thrust on his stern, oh, okay, um, and also on his yeah bow that, thruster. That current's not setting up well for him at all. Yeah. 
Okay. Okay, well, we can look at this crinoid while we're here and the ship's trying oh, to get yeah. started. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe we'll try not to stop. Yeah. Okay, go for zoom. Very nice. nice go ahead. Stopped crinoid. So this is an echinoderm, relatives of the sea stars, urchins, uh, brittle stars. These crinoids uh, come in a couple different flavors, both the okay, stocked variety I. as well as the unstocked variety of the swimming ones sometimes. But typically we find these stocked crinoids quite deep. But they can get quite enormous. Uh, we sampled one on our last cruise, um, possibly a new species that we're going to have our expert scientists ashore uh, characterize uh, when we deposit our collections at museums. That's exciting. There we yeah. go. What makes you think it might be a new one? There we go. Um, we have suspicions. So we've had expeditions that have come through here previously that have imaged this thing, and we've sent the images uh, of those critters to biologists all around the world. And typically there's some um, uncertainty from photo uh, photographs. You can't always tell things to the species level. So if we have a collection, we can better discern if it is a new species or uh, it's their suspicion that it might be. So that's the stocked crinoid? Yeah, one that we sampled on the last cruise, yeah. Oh, nice, okay. Which one was that? Was that the bright red one? It might have been the bright red okay. one. That yeah. was a very charismatic critter. We sampled <laughs> two of them, actually. Yeah, okay. one of them was the bright red Proisocrinus rubrimus, which is a pretty well-known species. But, um, you know, what's interesting, too, is that a lot of these crinoids have associates uh, on them, uh, either parasites. The crinoids? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, the paras they have parasites or, you know, predators um, often. And so, uh, you know... Go for zoom. Not only are we sampling the animal, but all of its uh, other associated animals. Very nice. Is that a cucumber? Yeah, we were looking at this a bit earlier. Um, I suspect it might be uh, a tunicate of some type. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I couldn't really tell from what they had uh, imaged earlier. It's a bit of a neat critter. It's definitely moving. You can see some feeding trails, so it might be a limpet of some type. A limpet with no shell? Uh, it, it might just be covered. Okay. Uh, it's, you can see some oh, yeah, hard bits that. inside there. Oh, wild. Okay. But yeah, they, they they often are quite fleshy, but you know, just because they're voluminous doesn't mean they're, you know, very big. They actually okay. Go wide. You can see the dark black feeding trails where it's probably scraped. Is and that scoured. what those are? I think oh, that's. Really cool. Yeah, I think oh. that's what they are. Oh yeah, that so looks much better, Kate. We yeah. see these trails associated just keep with that um, ship moving. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> Things like monoplacophorins. You know, What's that? Speed sample. When you get way yeah. ahead and then sit down, go real quick, jump up. Go yeah. Again. Yeah. Uh, Steve, I think it's going to be what we talked about before the watch, where we're going to be. We're we're not going to want to stop the ship. Because yeah. it seems to be pretty hard to get it moving again. Sure. Yeah, we'll we'll look for um, you know when when I I'll give you plenty of uh, distance about when we might want to do uh, a, a next rock collection, but um, we'll try and look for something super obvious. Okay. That we can just grab on the fly maybe. Yeah. But we're uh, we're at least a couple hundred meters of vertical away from our next. Perfect. Sampling. Yeah, and not and not making any particularly fast progress. Mm-hmm. Yeah, around 3,000 is our next planned Oh, great. Okay. Uh, rock collection, and we'll look for something more substantial. It looked like they did a little bit of biological sampling on the last one. So they got that cucumber.
Steve, we have a question about the, the stocked um, crinoids we just saw. Is there a reason we don't see those types of critters in colonies? We typically see them, or do we ever see them in colonies? Uh, good question. Uh, they're pretty solitary, uh, the stocked ones at least. Um, to see one with <laughs> multiple crinoid heads, that would be really, really unique. Um, but yeah, they're typically solitary. Um, however, on you know maybe dead sponges or c corals where um, you know the unstocked variety tend to want to perch up high on something and feed into the flow, uh, you might see many of them uh, kind of clustered at the highest point on, on a sponge or a coral. So yeah, they no coloniality, but uh, typically we'll see them um, clustered. Yeah, feeding dense. frenzies. Yes. <laughs> yep. Another something there. Might be another stocked crinoid friend. And shrimp. Go for zoom. Yeah, this 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 so this one is um, another type of stocked crinoid. Uh, that we okay, actually did wide. sample on the last cruise. Uh, a slightly larger individual, but um, trying to remember the family name that we had given it. Cucumber. They're so purple. It's so oh, wild. It's a pretty good size <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, sea cucumbers are kind of the dominant large critter down here. They're uh, not very large or very dominant. <laughs> <laughs> Relatively speaking, yeah. <laughs> the deeper you go, the more likely you're to see these deposit feeders. Are we still looking to sample some sea cucumbers on this dive? Yep, we did sample two already. Oh, exciting. Yep, so we'll have that. Um, I want to change our bearing to 310 to keep us on the crest of the ridge. We're kind of falling off with these northerly, easterly go for it. moves. Seems good to me. Bridge, Nav. Can you change the bearing to 310? Roger. Yeah, good. Good speed right now. It's a good speed. I'm catching up on the changes and trying to find where everything went. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. That's good. Thank you. Yeah, it's definitely different. Yeah. It's all there, you just gotta hunt for it. I don't know why that didn't appear. Oh, because it's the DP2, that's why. How's that? Is that better? Okay. That current and wind is not not ideal for this. So what's that? The current and the wind being yeah. proposed does not really help us out. Sure. There's a fair, fair amount of particulate matter in the water column, which could be indicative of why we're seeing a little bit more suspension feeding benthic critters, suspension feeding and filter feeding critters. Uh, like these sponges and the crinoids we just saw. This one looks like a, some sort of racellid, uh, maybe colophagus uh, glass sponge. We saw a very, very large one around 11 o'clock or so local. Oh, really? Yeah. Awesome. I really. love these guys. Really yeah, me too. I've just been calling them Dr. Seuss sponges. <laughs> <laughs> They're very Dr. seuss -y. Uh, Can I get a zoom? Animals that are composed of cool. lots of different small microscopic okay. organisms. Go wide. 
that work together to create feeding currents. Keep moving to keep in the keep in the and sweet spot here. They they produce this usually very charismatic three dimensional structure that is dependent on the species, um, but the body of it is made out of glass spicules, which is pretty impressive. If you ever get to see them under a microscope, they look exactly like fiber optic cable sometimes. And then when they're on your workbench, they look exactly like fiberglass. <laughs> yep. Yeah, we had one last cruise that was I couldn't, indistinguishable from fiberglass. Especially when it was in your hand. Coming down a little bit. Is yeah. he actually able to make that bearing change? He's trying. Uh -huh. um, so right now he's moving more in 350, which is quite a bit off from where we want to be. Okay. Looks like he's headed off to the yeah. east again. Okay, well, that'll be downhill. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be coming down for a little bit, it looks like. Do we have any insight about who's watching today and from where? That is a good question. It's uh, <laughs> middle of the night here in <laughs> Hawaiian Standard Time, but we have... Yeah, it looks like we've got all over. some people from around the globe. Um, and feel free to chat in where you're from. But we've got some people in the U.S., Germany, Sweden, Russia, Brazil, uh... Who else? Puerto Rico, New Zealand, and the Netherlands so far. Yeah, thanks for joining us on our first late night watch. There's another one of those crinites. Those are so yeah. cool. That actually might be a third species that looks <gasps> more like um, oh, yeah. Yeah, I can get one called Proisocrinus uh, that we did sample on the last cruise, but it has a very char characteristic red color. Uh, this one. It's not as a vibrant, really vibrant red, but um, I can take a closer look and see if it go for zoom video. Does look like that? Could be, you know, tough as uh, color is such a tough variable to identify things down here because color is quite variable even within a species. So what other differences can you look at to tell between species? Um, you know, if you were to look at it from, from this perspective, you could look at, you know, how many arms or if the arm tips are branching, uh, you know, what the morphology of the stalk is, looks like. Okay, go wide. Great, thanks. That might not be pro okay. but it could just be a larger individual. I'm just going to try and saw, stick with the... My suspicion. Stick with Argus here. Fortunately, we have fantastic scientists ashore who can tell me whenever I'm wrong, <laughs> which is often. But I did catch just a brief glimpse of a cuskiel as well. Oh jeez, I missed it. It it's Sorry. okay. It was it was headed in the other direction. Okay. It knew what's up. Oh so yeah. <laughs> headed away. They're getting wise to us. Yeah. There's an interesting crack in the rock or a trail. Oh, or yeah, I see what you're looking at. That does look cool. 
Mm. Go check it out. We're um, Steve. We're definitely having some trouble getting the ship to go the direction we want. It's headed off to the southeast now. Um, and they're trying to get it back together. Sure. Um, but while we're waiting on that, I'll just keep scooting around wherever Argus is and see if there's anything cool to be seen. Okay. Sort of the best I can do. Yeah, there's nothing particularly magical about the line between the two waypoints, so if you find there's a, a, a direction that's better for the ship to move that isn't too divergent from where we're headed, feel free to readjust. Awesome, thank you. Very nice. Yeah, ROV some sort of fracture sampling. in the... What's that? ROV random sampling. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, could we just... Yeah, because that's the way the current's going, right? So that's <laughs> we just, way. like, have another seamount? The seamount's inconveniently located. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kind of cool, I guess, low bait or something like that. Just yeah, cracked. might be either some sort of, like, very... Broad crust area it could be an old sheet flow or something from when this cement was a volcano days. Steve, there's so many rocks here. I know, <laughs> I know. I want to try and maintain a little bit of a standardized sampling scheme, but um, what's the reason behind the regular sampling scheme? Um, we're trying to, uh, conserve, I mean, rocks are pretty great, um, to sample with frequency, but we only have six Niskin bottles. So we're trying to get rock samples that co-occur with Niskins. So yes, we can take more rocks and if we find more rocks, we can pick them up. We certainly have plenty of box space. Um, but I'm trying to be as faithful as possible to the, uh, pairings that we have to do. Gotcha. Um, so he redid the move once again, and he increased the speed from 0 0.2 knots to 0 0.3 knots. So Roger. Cool. Maybe it's great. Some more oomph. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Yeah, some of the things here look really suspicious and that they might be out of place, but they probably are all cemented to the seafloor with iron manganese crust. So not the easiest to sample, but um, depending if we maybe move a little bit more, if we start to see more of this uh, rocky rubble and it's attached, mm -hmm. maybe we'll take a rock sample since we're relatively close enough to our uh, original Niskin water sample, but uh, we'll take a look and wait a second and see if there's something okay. obvious before we make that call. Roger that. So besides a rock looking loose enough, what are we looking for when we look for a good rock sample, Steve? Yeah, we are... We are looking for uh, a couple different types of rocks uh, that are not too dissimilar from our sampling objectives on the last cruise. So there's a couple different types of rocks we might find in a seamount environment. Generally, the underlying rock uh, here is all basalt, you know, uh, cooled, uh, you know, previously magma that have cooled on the surface of the seamount. Um, they may have been altered over time, but largely it's it was all basalt originally. And then usually in a fresh sample, it looks quite angular. There's not a lot of, um, you know, smoothing from the, the layers back. and layers it's and layers there. of crust that have built up from precipitation of metals onto the surface of the rock. So he sounds like he wants to do a 180 degree turn though, which could set off all kinds of crazy things, but we'll, we'll see. And then the other type of rock. So, so just, uh, just confirm what heading that he wants to take. The other type of rock we're looking for are these more smooth, crusty bits. Um, they've, you know, the, the smoother the rock, 
the more likely it's been on the seafloor for a very long time, kind of in situ being uh, with, with this crust being deposited over millions and millions of years. One of the objectives I of mean, this I, particular I think cruise ultimately, is to characterize yeah, I would agree. that crust composition and of the water as well as of the rock itself. Very cool. Sorry, I've got two things going on in my head there. Um, Well, I agree. It's just when he gets broadside of the current, then we're really going to go to the southeast. He might, it might ultimately, over a bigger period of time, be the right thing to do. That's okay. I mean... Totally. I mean, he'll he'll end up slowing down probably. Yeah, it could end up delaying this a little bit, but it could end up delaying us getting going again for a while, 